Hi, I'm Chris Ferguson, and I'm here to turn you into a better poker player. So just sit back, pay attention, and you'll be ready to employ new ideas, tips, and strategies as a successful poker player. Let's start out with the game that made poker famous, Texas Hold'em. In the World Series of Poker, there are a maximum of nine players per table. That's you, against eight opponents who want to take your hard-earned chips. The rules are pretty simple. You're dealt two whole cards to start. And with the aid of five community cards, you try and create the best poker hand you possibly can. Or at least, the illusion that you have the best hand. Your strategy starts as soon as your whole cards are dealt. You're either going to call, raise the pot, or fold based on the strength of your hand. After that batting round, the first three community cards are put up face up in the middle of the table. Then there's another round of betting. Then you get the fourth community card, known as the turn. You get another round of betting. And then there's the final community card placed face up in the middle of the table, known as the river. After the river is dealt, you get one more chance to bet before you grit your teeth and show your cards. Let's talk about what hand beats what. The worst hand in poker is five cards that don't work together in any way. That's a hand that's called no pair. No pair loses to one pair. One pair is any hand that contains two cards of the same rank. For example, two queens. One pair, in turn, loses to two pair. Two pair is pretty self-explanatory. It's a hand that contains two pairs of cards that are of the same rank. For example, kings and deuces. Two pair is beaten by three of a kind. For example, three aces. And three of a kind loses to a straight. A straight is any five cards in sequence. For example, four, five, six, seven, eight. A straight loses to a flush. A flush is five cards all of the same suit. For example, five clubs. A full house is three of a kind and a pair, and that beats a flush, but loses to four of a kind. For example, four nines. Four of a kind loses to a straight flush. A straight flush is five cards in sequence of the same suit. For example, three, four, five, six, seven, all of spades. The best hand in poker is the highest straight flush, and the highest straight flush is ace, king, queen, jack, ten of the same suit, and that's called a royal flush. Now, if two people have hand of the same rank, for example, they both have two pair, then what you want to do is you want to look at the higher pair in both players' hands. If the highest pair in one hand is a pair of aces, that's going to beat the player who has the highest pair in his hand being a pair of kings. If both players' the highest pair is a pair of kings, then you look at the second pair. Kings and eights beating kings and deuces. For example, if both players have the same two pair, for example, kings and eights, then what you want to do is you want to look at the last card in the hand. And the player with the highest kicker, the final fifth card in that hand, is going to take the pot. Here's how the betting rounds work. In the first betting round, there are two forced bets known as blinds put up by the first two players to act after the dealer button. After each hand, the dealer button advances, and as the dealer button rotates around the table, so do the blinds. The first blind, or small blind, is half as much as the big blind. Once the blinds are posted, the player to the right of the blinds has a decision to make. If he wants to stay in the hand, he can call, which is to match the amount of the big blind. If he's got a strong hand, he can raise. Raising is putting in more chips than the previous better, or in this case, the big blind. Whenever you raise, your new bet is the amount other players now have to call. What if you don't want to call a raise? Well, if you have four cards, you can fold. Folding is giving up your cards and any chance of winning the pot. Action continues until all remaining players have called the same amount or have folded. If everyone folds except for one player, that player takes the pot. On subsequent betting rounds, there are no blinds, so it's up to somebody to make an opening bet. What if you don't want to make an opening bet? You check. Checking is staying in the hand without having to put any more of your chips in the pot. As long as no one in front of you has bet yet, you can check. Once somebody bets, though, you're back to having to call, raise, or fold. Got it? Don't worry, a few hands of actual play will clarify everything.
In Limit Hold'em, you're very limited in the amounts you can bet or raise. In a 20-40 limit game, the blinds are 10 and 20, and you can bet or raise only 20 at a time for the first two betting rounds, before and after the flop. After the turn and after the river, you can only bet or raise 40 at a time. In No Limit, the betting is a lot less structured. The only betting restriction is that the bet or raise has to be at least the size of the previous bet or raise of the current betting round. In this game, you can really see what your opponents are made of. Want to put other people at the table to the ultimate test? Push all your chips in. Position refers to your place at the table in relation to the dealer button. It determines who has the blinds and equally importantly, who acts first and last on each betting round. In a nine-handed game, the three players after the big blind are in early position. The next two are said to be in middle position. And the two players after that, in front of the button and on the button, are said to be in late position. Late position is the most advantageous position because you get to see what your opponents do before you have to act. The last person to act, known as the dealer, has the greatest positional advantage. You need a very strong hand to play from early position. You need a hand that can beat six to eight other players yet to act. If it's folded around you in middle position, you still need a pretty good hand that can beat four or five other players. But if it's folded around you in late position, you can play a lot more hands because you only need to beat the last two or three players yet to act. If a player raises in front of you, be very wary of the position they raise from because this is a very strong indication of how strong their hand is. The earlier position they raise from, the stronger the hand they need to play. Okay, so what makes starting hands strong, weak, or marginal? I've explained table position first because, as I mentioned, the cards you choose to play depend a lot on where you're sitting. The first thing to remember, though, is that these are just suggestions of what cards to start with. You should always be paying attention to how your opponents are playing. Also, I'm only talking about starting hands. Just because you have pocket aces, you know, and the board comes four diamonds doesn't mean you should keep raising like a madman if you don't have a diamond. In that case, you've probably got to throw your hand away because someone's almost certain to have a flush. The hands I recommend playing make for a fairly tight playing style, which is good for a beginner. One of the most common mistakes a beginner makes is playing way too many hands. With the popularity of poker on TV, you only see exciting hands, and it may seem like players are constantly in the action. What might appear to be back-to-back -back monster hands for a player might actually be separated by a dozen boring hands where everybody except one player folds. Patience is the key to winning poker. As a general rule, you need a much stronger hand to play from early position. These include pocket pairs eights through aces, ace-king, ace-queen, and ace-jack. Middle position opens up your possibilities slightly. Pocket fives, sixes, and sevens become viable, along with suited connectors, better than seven, eight, and any two face cards. Late position provides much more freedom for raising. Any ace or king with any card can become playable as long as no one has entered the pot yet. There are a number of different playing styles, and learning how to play them is as important as learning how to recognize them in your opponents. Successful players will adapt their playing style to how their opponents are playing. Changing your style in this way is known as switching gear. Here are some tips on how to play against certain player types. A tight player is someone who only plays quality hands. Be very cautious of this player when they raise in front of you, as they are likely to be holding something very strong. When a tight player is on your left, you can often scare them out of the pot with a raise, so you want to be raising more often. If they re-raise you, at least you'll know where you are, and you can lay down all but your strongest hands. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have loose players. These players will play a lot of hands. This can be troublesome, as often it's difficult to know what they're holding. If you have to act first, and you have a strong hand, you can let them do the raising and look for opportunities to check raise or slow play your hand. If they call or raise in front of you, be more inclined to call or re-raise with your stronger hand. Professionals, surprise, surprise, will be your toughest opponents. They'll be very good at picking up on how you're playing and even better at switching gears just when you think you've got them figured out. My advice, though, is to play them as you would any other good card player. I often get asked three specific questions on how to be a winning tournament player. 
how many chips am I supposed to have after the first two levels? Should I play a lot of hands early on while the blinds are small and then tighten up later as they increase? To avoid finishing on the bubble, should I tighten up more as I get close to the money or should I try to accumulate more chips early on? Surprisingly, all three questions have the same answer. Don't try to force things to happen. Instead, concentrate on adjusting for other players, not where you are in the tournament. The most important skill is the ability to react to a wide range of opponents with a wide range of playing styles. In essence, play your opponents, not where you are in the tournament. If you catch a player making a mistake, be sure to make him pay for it. If you're the first player to enter the pot after the blinds, you either want to raise or fold. If you think you have the best hand, or you feel that you can steal the blinds, then raise. If not, fold. Never call. Beginners play too many hands, and they play them too passively. Experts fold more, raise more, and do a lot less calling. If the best players in the world have one thing in common, it's that they all play very aggressively. The first thing about bluffing is knowing when to do it. A lot of players think they should bet just because they feel their opponent's weak. If you have a decent hand that's probably good anyway, just check it down and hope to take the pot. Or better yet, check it to your opponent and hope that they will try to bluff you. That way you can call him down and win even more chips. Your best hands, you want to bet for value. You only want to bluff with your worst hands, especially when your opponent thinks that you're strong. When you do decide to bluff, Bet the same amount you would with a strong hand, and bet it exactly the same way. Drawing hands are some of the hardest hands to play. One way to approach these hands is to play cautiously until you hit your draw, and then bet strong. Another way to play is to bet or raise with the draw itself. This play is known as a semi-bluff, and it's one of the strongest plays in poker. It allows you two ways to win the pot. If you force your opponent to fold, you've already won. If he calls, you still have another chance to hit your draw and rake in an even bigger pot. <laughs>